Alright guys, so today I finally have the long-awaited settings video that you guys have been asking for. So in this video, I'll be talking about all the settings from gameplay to controller to video and audio. But I'll be going more in depth about the controller settings and more specifically about my ALC settings and how you guys can find your perfect ALC settings. So let's go ahead and hop into it. And if you guys find this video helpful at all, please go ahead and drop a like, subscribe, and go ahead and go down to the comments and let me know which legend you're maining this season. Alright, so first up, we're going to talk about the gameplay settings. And for the most part, these settings are personal preference, but there are a few very important settings I have on here that are going to help clear the visual clutter in the game. So I'm going to go ahead and run through those settings with you guys. And up first, we have interact prompt style. So definitely keep this on compact. And when you're looking at loot of the ground, this is what it looks like when it's on compact. Just a lot more just clear, easy to look at. And then you switch it over to default, and it's a giant box just blocking your screen. So definitely go ahead and keep this on compact. And for button hints, I like to have this off personally. This is what it looks like when it's on. You'll see there at the bottom of that screen, it says LB to throw out my drone. And then it'll say right on the D-pad to call it back. So it kind of gives you like reminders of what buttons to hit. I like to have it off. Crosshair damage feedback. I also like to have this off just for less visual clutter on my screen. This is what it looks like when you're shooting at enemies. And then this is what it looks like when you have it on. It just has like that X feedback. See what I'm talking about? So I personally like to have it off. If you have it on, it's not gonna hurt you, but just personal preference there. Um, damage numbers, keep this on stacking 100%. Ping opacity faded, obituaries on, minimap rotation. 90% of the people have this off. I'm one of the few that has it on, so I guess personal preference there as well. Weapon, auto cycle, and empty. 100% have this on. It's gonna switch to your other weapon if you ever run out of your primary weapon. So always keep this on on. Auto sprint, I recommend having this on, on as well because this game's all about movement and you're always moving in Apex. So always keep this on on. And you can still walk too. Like see here, I'm just barely moving my left stick and I'm still able to slow walk. And then I can just instantly start running without having to click down on my left stick. So I recommend keeping this on on. Double tap the sprint, definitely keep this off. Jetpack control. This only affects Valkyrie and there's no reason to keep this on toggle. It just feels weird. So when you're flying Valkyrie's jetpack, it's just a lot easier to hold it and just kind of tap around. You can have a lot more of just maneuverability and just more movement. So definitely keep that on. Thanks for not giving up on me. Definitely keep that on hold. Incoming damage feedback. There's no reason to have it on 2D, 3D both. This is pretty much just like the indicator on your screen of which direction you're getting shot from. I like to have mine on 3D, but 2Ds, they say there's less visual clutter. So personal preference there. I like mine 3D. Taking damage closes death box or crafting menu. This is really important. It's probably the most important gameplay setting. Keep this on off because you have it. If you have it on and you're in the storm and you're trying to craft something, and you're taking storm damage. You won't be able to craft anything because you're gonna get keep getting kicked off the crafter. And if you're trying to like shield swap on a box and you're getting shot at, it's gonna kick you off that box before you can get that shield swap off because you have the setting on. So definitely don't have it on. It's gonna hurt you. Always keep it off. Off screen portraits. I have it off. Pop up, pop up. I have it on. Streamer mode off, in anonymous mode really disabled, usage sharing, doesn't really matter, enabled. Performance display, I have mine off. It just kind of shows you your FPS and all that stuff. Communication filter, I have everybody. And for reticle, this is what my reticle looks like right now. I just kind of like the neon green because it kind of fits that crypto vibe. But probably the best one for in terms of like visuals and being able to see stuff clearly is probably red over here. Just keeping it like that bright red, like dark bright red. So having red is really good as well, but I just kind of like that green. And then for laser sight, kind of the same thing. I kind of like, it's like that MW2 classic. This is neon green laser sight. I kind of like that. Ready to download. All right, so colorblind mode. I like to keep mine off. Uh, some people like to keep it on. I think it's Protonopia. Yeah, see how they get blue when they're lit up right here? So when in the digi threat on this other colorblind mode, they become blue. But then you keep it on is off and they're just a default red so i mean i guess it's, if you want to if you want people to become blue and your digi threat you can change that but other than that you just personal preference i like mine off subtitles off all this doesn't really matter and next we're going to go ahead and talk about my controller settings and just for reference i do play controller on pc and i am using a playstation 5 battle weaver controller so I do have four extra buttons on the back of my controller, allowing me to just never take my thumbs off my thumbsticks and just have more flexibility in my button layout. So this is my current button layout. And really the only thing that's different in here that's kind of weird 
is I do use RB as my interact and reload button and I do use X as my shield like wheel icon thing. And the reason for that is I just kind of fell in love with like using RB to reload and kind of zipline hop and all that. And also as a crypto main, have, like throwing up my drone and then having to use like my D-pad to start like shielding at the same time as droning. It was a little like, it wasn't hard, but it just became a lot easier when I started using X on the back of my controller. Like I'll just slide over there and then bang, throw up my drone, put on the bat. And it just, my movement became a lot better when I was trying to throw drone and bat at the same time, you know what I mean? So I just kind of, it just became a lot easier for me. And that's really the only thing I really changed on my button layout. This is all personal preference here. Like I like having my grenade at the bottom, all that, just, just personal there. Um, stick layout, default, interact, reload button, tap it, tap to use and reload, 100%. Crouch button, you always want this on hold, I say. Like, if you want it on toggle, go for it, but hold just kind of makes your movement a little bit better, in my opinion. It just feels better in this game. Aim button, always have hold. Survival slot button, I have on. And that's just for, uh, like I'll show you here. That's really just for, like, these things, right? And mobile respawns especially, you can just pull them out real fast. So let's say this is a mobile respawn, I just use my left D-pad and I can just drop that real fast. Instead of having to open up my menu and then click here. I need a survival so it just kind of makes it a lot more seamless. And especially with crypto, you want to drop that mobile respawn in like instantly. So definitely keep this button on. But I guess the downfall is if you have it off, you won't be able to like inspect your stuff. But I always just use my keyboard to inspect. Adaptive triggers I keep off, trigger dead zone none. Menu cursor speed, I like mine around like that 65% area, that's just me. And then now we're into the actual controller settings. So we'll talk about these first before we hop into my ALCs. Boop. Off. This is, you probably heard this a thousand times. This is about, like, this is the pro setting right here. Like all pros, probably like 95% of pros use this right here. It's gonna be 4-3 linear with no dead zone. Um, I keep no dead zone. You'll see there I have a little sticker if it's kind of doing his own thing. If you put that on small, it fixes that. See how like I no longer have that just weird stick drift. So look at it again. Put it on none, it starts moving on its own. And then put it on small, and this is pretty sturdy. So that's um I guess a good way. Like if you have a little stick drift, put it on small. If you don't, put it on none. This right here is like the universal. Every pro uses this. They all recommend it. Consistent settings, very good. I played on these settings for probably about a year and a half, and they were really good. There. My name is a little wonky, but it is, there are pretty solid settings. They're, they'll never do you wrong. They're consistent. And for the rest of these, you want your look dead zone on none, movement dead zone on small, and in your inverted look and vibration off. All right, so let's go ahead and hop into the ALC settings. And I want you guys to remember that there is no universal setting that is perfect for everybody. Everyone's different and they're going to have different styles. So just take that into Great, account so when I'm showing off. you guys these. And I'm going to do my best to help you guys find your perfect setting. And to do that, we have to talk about these first three settings right here. Dead zone, out of threshold, and the response curve. All right, so we're going to start with dead zone. And pretty much with dead zone, you want to have this as low as possible. And really, the only reason you're going to raise this is if you have like insane stick drift, right? So for me, 2% was perfect. Like when I'm on my ALCs, I really have no stick drift at all. Like this is feels perfect for me. I've been on a two dead zone for a while now, ever since I got this new controller. And honestly, you want you want to keep this as low as possible, right? So for a basis, I would put this down on 0% and then from there kind of look around. You see all my stick drift starts kicking in. So for me, going up to 2% was perfect. And I honestly wouldn't recommend anything over 5% and 5% might even be pushing it. So try and keep this as low as possible. And if you look over here on the right side of the screen, you see the ring. So when you up, when you bring this up, you'll see that blue ring kind of expanding in the middle. And that's pretty much, yeah, you, you'll feel this. I'll go ahead and show you guys when you go into this. Like I'm moving my stick right now, like just tiny little circles and nothing's down. registering. So you really just want to keep this as low as possible. And for me, 2% is perfect. All right, so outer threshold. This one is a little bit more confusing for people, but basically it kind of goes hand in hand with like you're turning extra yaw and turning extra pitch and when that will kick in and also just when like your stick will stop registering or start registering so outer threshold basically since i have mine at two percent it's almost on the outside of the ring of my thumbstick so for like i have like that max input kick in i need to push my stick all the way to the outside and if i raise this up you'll see how the, the orange ring on the right is getting smaller and smaller and smaller so that pretty much like right there if it's on 30 percent I don't have to push my stick all the way to the outside for me to have my the max input on my um on my stick. 
So you'll feel like if you put this on, you'll feel it. like you go to the range and you start spinning in circles. You'll feel this, the difference in the outer thresholds. And for me, I've always kept it on one or two percent. I've never done anything else like one Upgrades or two. Two percent for me was perfect. Whenever I went up, I just started feeling more inconsistent personally. So if I were you, I'd keep this between one or two percent. I see a lot of people also play on five. So if that's you, go for it. Like I said, everyone's kind of different. They all have personal preferences. So you do you here. It's all like touch and feel. So I'm going to keep mine at 2%. And then for response curve, this one's pretty easy to explain. Lower values are like a lot more twitchier. And then the higher you go is more dual and it's a lot more sticky aim assist. But you just feel less responsive. And zero response curve is basically playing on linear. And 10 is basically playing on classic. So if you're someone that plays on classic and you feel like maybe you're too stiff, but then you switch to linear and you also feel maybe you're too like loose and too twitchy, some people play like on that 5% or that 5 response curve to kind of get that in-between feeling. I have always liked linear and sometimes zero response curve is just a little bit too okay, much for me. So I just put it on one and choose. I've been playing on these settings like these three, 2%, 2% and one for the past year and I haven't switched it and I've been feeling a lot more consistent recently. So that's what I would do if I were you guys. Find like these three right here, find the ones that are the most consistent for you and you like the most and just really never change them. Just kind of master those settings, never change them and you'll become a much better player in my opinion. So that's what I would do for these three. So now we'll go ahead and hop into the yaw speed and pitch speed. Uh, for me, I've always, ever since my Rainbow Six Siege days, I've always liked having, because I played R6 on, um, on Xbox, I was on controller. So I've always liked having the faster horizontal speed and the slower uh, vertical speed. And that's not always the best. I know a lot of people that play like on exactly, like pretty much the exact same, like 260, 260 or something. So your horizontal and vertical speed are the exact same. So you're a lot more consistent on the diagonal looking. But I've always like, I've been playing on this right here, 300 and 208 for yaw speed and pitch speed forever. That's just my personal preference. But like I was explaining, yaw speed is your horizontal speed. So you're looking left to right like this. That's your yaw speed. And pitch speed is your vertical. So looking up and down. So it affects how much you look up and down like that. So kind of for these, after you find out your top three, the dead zone, outer threshold response curve, that's when you start adjusting your yaw and pitch speeds and stuff. And you'll be able to find that perfect sense for you that you kind of like looking left and right, up and down and whatnot. And turning extra yaw is pretty much when your stick is at the maximum. And this also goes hand in hand with the outer threshold because if your stick is at its maximum on the 30%, you only have to push it basically halfway than usual. As you see there with the, the orange ring. So that just remember that they go hand in hand. So sure, back down to the turning extra yaw. Pretty much when your stick is at the maximum, I'll be getting an extra 160 on my yaw speed. So I'll be at 460 whenever I'm looking left or right at the maximum and put on my stick. And that's why I kind of like having for flicks, I like having the extra turning extra yaw. And for, I never turn on turning extra pitch. For me, it always messed me up and I just always kept it off. And I guess one thing I forgot to mention, if you guys see these lines right here on each bar, this is the default. This is like when you're, this is like the default setting. Just remember that. All right, back up 300, 208, 160. Yeah, so I don't like any turning extra pitch. And for ramp up time and ramp up delay, I would keep these both on 0%. Me for me, I've, I've tried them out once or twice and I just, I never like them. They, just, they feel weird to me. So keep these both on 0%. But you can read up there, it says turning ramp up time. When stick input is at the maximum, how long it takes any extra yaw or pitch to reach the full strength. And for turning ramp up delay, when stick input is at the maximum, how long to wait before applying any extra yaw or pitch. So it just adds like a ramp up time and ramp up delay that I feel are just unnecessary. And for ADS yaw speed and pitch speed, this is all personal preference as well. This is um, ADS yaw speed is when you're aiming down the sights and looking left to right, how fast you're looking left to right. And ADS pitch speed is when you're looking down your sights, how fast you're going up and down. So I recommend turning a little bit of the ADS turning extra yaw on for um, for the ADS one, because it kind of helps when on controller, it's a lot harder to look left and right and up and down when ADSing compared to when you're on M and K. So this will kind of help for like wingman flicks and whatnot and just Upgrades general like scope ahead. flicks in general. So I recommend having some of these on, but I know a lot of people that have them all the way off. So this one is also a personal preference setting. You just kind of mess around with it in the firing range and see what you like. You'll feel it when you turn it on and off. And for the same thing from here, uh, for here, turn these off 0% for the ramp up time, ramp, ramp up delay on ADS. And target compensation, that's your aim assist. So I don't know why you would turn that off, keep it on. And same for the melee. 
And now we'll go ahead and look at my per optic settings. I've never touched these. I've left these the same forever, like the past year and a half that I've been playing on these. I've left these the same. I think actually, no, I did up my two times optics to, from 1.2 to 1.3, just cause I like a little bit faster ADS speed. So that's just me. And another thing to remember, uh, turning these on like these, the per optic ADS sensitivity also affects your your movement aim like this right here, like the look sensitivity and look ADS of like the, the default settings. So remember that these right here, these per optic settings will, if you turn this off, like the ALCs are off, they still affect your default settings. So remember that, and it's always good to have these type of settings on. So I would put all these on. Some people like maybe a little bit slower on the higher optics. I like them fast just for like, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big sniper guy. So I like faster optics on my snipers, but that's really personal preference too. Just go into the firing range, maybe put these on as a basis and adjust from there. That's always the best thing to do. And yeah, well, I guess one last thing here. I didn't talk about in the per optic settings. Um, I, for some reason I can't scroll down, but the bottom one here is sear passive. So when you're using Sears passive, like you have your hands out and you're looking like you're aiming down sights to use his heartbeat sensor or whatever, uh, this will affect how fast you can turn left and right. So this is good for all the people that play Sears. I would recommend definitely don't keep it on the default one. You can raise it a little bit and it'll feel so much better. So yeah, that's basically it for my ALC settings. Um, I know that can be kind of confusing and I'm not the best, best that's at explaining things. Shoes. So if you guys have any questions about these down in the comments, you guys know I always read the comments and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So just comment anything you're confused about and I'll try to help you out as much as I can. But yeah, other than that, I'll go ahead and do a quick talk about my video and audio settings and that will be it. And then maybe we'll hop into some gameplay. So video, I play full screen, aspect ratio native, Resolution native brightness. I like on 70 FOV maxed out FOV Ability scaling this one really only affects octane. I'm pretty sure so I have mine enabled I can show you the quick difference there. Let me switch to my boy I used to be an octane main back in the day. I had like 4k awesome. kills on him on Xbox. Unfortunately, it doesn't transfer anymore But all right, so see when I'm aiming down sights and then I use my stim You see how it kind of zooms in a little bit and it's like slowly zooming out so that's what FOV ability scaling does. And if you turn this off, oh, bye. Now when I use my stem and I'm ADSing, I won't have that, that screen shake or that screen zoom in. So watch, it just stays normal. So it's just kind of what you like. I liked having it on. I used to play with it off, but I kind of liked having it on. It made me feel like, I don't know, more immersive, I guess, but it really doesn't matter. Um, sprint view shake, I have a minimal. V-Sync, always have this off. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, enabled plus boost it 100%. Adaptive resolution, FPS target, zero, anti-aliasing, TSSA, texture streaming budget, ultra. All right, so this part, I usually keep pretty much all this on high, 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 and then just low on these. Just because I like to have higher quality for my videos, and I'm not really looking for like the higher like frame rates personally. So if you're looking for more frame rates and you're on PC, turn all this on low pretty much. You know what I mean? Just have this as low as possible because it will just pretty much free up GPU load and you'll just have higher frame rates. But if you're looking for higher quality videos like me, or you're just looking for higher quality in general, just kind of put these on high. It's just up to you. If you have a PC that can do it, I say do it, but really it doesn't matter at the end of the day. I should upgrade We're just having fun out here. So just that's my video settings and we'll do a quick audio. Oh, what did I, I guess, it, audio. Um, sometimes I'll bring this on low. If I'm just playing with friends and we're just talking, I'll put it on lower. But when I'm recording, I keep it on 100%. Uh, system default, device default, default, push to talk. That doesn't really matter. Yeah, I'll just, I won't even talk about these. You can just look at them. So yeah, that pretty much does it for the settings here. If you guys, like I said, if you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments and I'll be happy to help with you guys. But other than that, hope this helped out and we'll hop into the gameplay. Back on that chain. Someone's under the bridge. On your side? Like, oh, I see him. He jumped yeah. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He jumped away. I've got eyes on one of them over there. Can we just hold this building down? To jump right on him. They just jumped yeah. on that rev, bro. He's dead. Yeah, just hold that. We do have an evac for later. Turn to four. Holy dude! Dude! 